books have been read, coffee has now been acquired. So now it's time to talk about my month of reading for August. And guys, August was one of my best reading months this year. I got through a ton of books. I read some of the best books I've read this year. I had a couple books I didn't really vibe with, a few DNFs. There's a lot to talk about. I read 12 books in this month. I DNF'd two, so there's 14 books I went through. One was a non-fix, so you probably won't want to hear too much about that. But we've got a lot of books to dive through. But before we go any further, make sure you tell me what you read in August. What was the worst book you read in August? What was the best thing you read in August? And what was the weirdest thing that came across a book that you read in August? For me, the weirdest thing that came across my reading was probably the noodle train system in Dungeon Crawler Carl book three. But while you're down there, let me know what you read and if I should read it. Make sure you like the video, make sure you subscribe, it helps. We talk fun bookish things here. Sorry for the audio at the start of this video. I had a wrong setting on my mic. It gets fixed up after my first two reviews. So let's dive into it guys, because I start off my month with an absolute banger. And that's The Lonesome Crown by Brian Lee Durfee. The final book in the Five Warrior Angel trilogy. And we talked a lot about this one last month after I just finished reading The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart. And what I can say now that I finished the trilogy is The Blackest Heart is my favorite. The Lonesome Crown is my second favorite with a 4.5 out of five. And then Forgetting Moon, four out of five. So very strong trilogy overall. I've talked about this one a lot on the channel in the last month, so I don't want to go too far into it. Book three was the epic conclusion. All the armies were coming together, all the mythical weapons were coming together. So you can kind of get that Faithful and the Fallen sort of plot from this story. Very different from the Faithful and the Fallen outside of the plot. The writing, the characters, the world, all very different. Just the plot is similar. But I really liked everything to do with this book. It's very interesting seeing everything come together. But the last battle took forever. It took me like two days to read the last battle. It might have been something like the, um, the, the Wheel of Time last battle. It just went on forever. But unlike the Wheel of Time where there's 14 books that set up and it's just a magical battle, I assume, this one was just too long for me. If I have to spend multiple days reading a battle, it, it, it's probably too much. So that one was a bit too much for me, but everything else finished off very nice. Very solid, 4.5 out of 5. If you don't mind having slimy, dark characters as your main characters, if you want beautiful, descriptive writing similar to a Kristoff or a Steven Erickson, if you want some classic inspired world building, but with some fresh twists on it, you're gonna have a great time with The Lonesome Crown and The Five Warrior Angels. So I highly recommend checking it out. But if you don't want morally ambiguous characters, you don't want to check out this series. It's not going to work for you. You're not going to like the characters. You're going to hate it. It's some very dark themes in here. So make sure you know that going into it and check the trigger warnings. So Lones of Crown was a very strong read. But then we had our book club read. And we chose to read Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Eames, book one of the Band trilogy. So far, only the two books are out. And in our book club, the Fable book club that you can find down in the description, we're reading Essex Dogs this month jump on. This is going to be so good. I can't wait to read a six dogs. I'm going to be starting it today and probably finishing it in like two days because I'm super hyped for it. But a book club read for August was Kings of the Wild, a D&D inspired story, both in the world and the questing feel, a very lighthearted sort of story where we're getting the band back together for one last mission to save one of the members daughters. And this one didn't work for me at all because there was no stakes. Everything just always worked out. Everyone survives in the end. The humor was just too simple and on the nose for me, but I can see why this book is so loved. The writing style is super easy to read. You'll be able to sit down and just absolutely fly through this. And if you're in the mood for the sort of frat boy humor, as I would call it, you are gonna have a good time with it. And I, if, not, and if I was in the right mindset, I think I would have been able to have a really good time and call this a five, but I've just been reading a lot of serious books recently and this one just didn't match what I was wanting and craving at the time. So for me, this was more like a two out of five sort of read, but I can see it being a four or a five because there's a lot of strong points in it that just weren't strong points for me because I wasn't in the mood for it. But keeping with the book series that has a similar tone to Kings of the Wild, but did work for me, we'll return to my Dungeon Crawler Carl adventures. So Dungeon Crawler Carl by Matt Dinneman. I've talked about this one quite a lot on the channel. We've got a guy called Carl, he's from Seattle. He went outside to get his girlfriend's cat. And everyone inside gets smushed and he enters an alien game show, which is an 18 level dungeon where you get video game like features and you've got to make it through these dungeon levels to survive. And this one leans into that same style of humor, the frat boy humor as we'll call it. And I feel like it just does it a little bit better, but there is stakes in Dungeon Crawler Carl, unlike in Kings of the Wild. 
lots of people are dying. There is fewer and fewer human lives every single level. And because we, our main character is from today's society, we can relate to Carl so much. And then because we're in like this video game sort of dungeon level sort of setting, there's a very compelling plot. We just have to survive the level, make it to the next step. But there's a subplot in here where Carl is trying to fight back against the game makers and trying to find a way to mess up the people running the show and the politics outside of the show of all the interplanetary aliens and what's going on there is super intriguing. This gets leveled up again in book three. So I'm on book three, so I didn't mention that. So as I mentioned, the politics and the plot gets leveled up, but also our characters do. We get to know another character on a deeper level. We get to meet more crawlers from the dungeons and everything just gets turned up a little bit in the Dungeon Anarchist cookbook. It was a fantastic read. I highly recommend this series and I can't wait to jump into the fourth book. This was my first time doing this via audiobook. As everyone says, Dungeon Crawler Cult has to be done by audiobook. I read the first two just on my Kindle, and I really like this as a physical read. It's just such light, easy reading. Because of the way there's levels and Carl is just constantly trying to survive, it's super compelling to read, but it's also fantastic to listen to. The accents, the voices, the sounds are all fantastic. I think this can be done both ways. I understand why people are just on audio only, but sometimes you just need something like that that you can just read, put in front of your eyes and just consume as well. Definitely something I recommend for a lot of people. Then coming back to some more serious fantasy, I read The Baker of Chains, book two of A Vengeful Realm by Tim Fasciola. And I also started book three, The Age of the End of this series this month. And I gave these both a four out of five, but I ended up DNFing the last book, The Age of the End, just because everything was good. There was good action, there was good politics, there was good characters, there was good world building, but there was nothing that I found that was great that I just had to read. I really liked the Roman inspired world. I really liked the multiple magic systems we got. There's some blood magic, there's some just other just regular godly powers magic. We get POVs of everyone. So we get to see all sides of the action, all sides of the conflict, everyone's different ways of vying for power and everything was really good. But there was just nothing that pulled me in that extra little bit. So I say this is a very four out of five series for me. I liked book one the most because it was just deeply entrenched into the politics. The action wasn't as heavy. It was more just little skirmishes and things going on the outside. And then it's just been all out battle for the last two books, which has been great, but it's just been a little bit too much more of the same. So I ended up DNFing this one, but it's still a really good series. There just wasn't that little bit extra that pulled me into it. But the next few things we have to talk about are series that absolutely pulled me in. So the next series that I drove into was The Gale Song Saga by Shauna Lawless with the first book, The Children of Gods and Fighting Men. And I absolutely adored this series. So this is a historical fantasy set in late 10th century, early 11th century Ireland. And the fantasy element comes from Irish mythology where there's two different types of magical races of people. One's called like the Tatha Duandan and one's called the Formarians. Those pronunciations are completely wrong. I wouldn't be able to pronounce a single name in this book correctly without listening to the audiobook first. And even then, I'd struggle to get the right tones right because Australians can't say anything correctly, can we? But coming back to the Gale Song Saga, we are following a female from each of these two magical lines. And these magical lines are enemies. Both of these magical people's populations are on the decline. One of them, there's only three left in book one. And the other one is about 300 to 500. They're not as specific on how many of them there are left. And the two women we're following are complete opposites. One lady who's from the magical peoples that only have three left, she is savage and will do anything to look after herself, her brother and her mother who are the last of their people. And she starts over in Dublin. So at the moment where we're following her, the Vikings have quite a lot of power in Dublin. And the other lady we're following She's a lot softer. She's a lot sweeter. She's an absolute sweetheart and a gem, and we just want to look after her. She spends most of her time further south, where the Irish still have control and they haven't been taken over by the Vikings. But we're following these two ladies as they're going about their lives. So the history of Ireland is happening around them. So we're seeing some history, but we're really just getting two deep character stories for two very strong women, but in their own ways. We've got Gorma just doing anything to look after herself and her family. And then we've got Fola, who is, do, is doing everything she can to look after her family as well and her loved ones, but in completely different ways. She's so much more sweeter, but you love them both. One 
Gormla is an absolutely horrible person, but you understand the motivations and love it. This is just a beautiful story for character work. The magic is super intriguing. The storyline's intriguing. Then there's just historical stories taking place around our story. So we're seeing Ireland get united. It reminds me so much of The Last Kingdom. I love this series. I forgot to mention, I didn't just read The Children of Gods and Fighting Men. I also read The Words of Kings and Prophets, and I'm halfway through my advanced reader copy of The Land of the Living and the Dead. I absolutely love this trilogy, and I've been smashing through it this month. So then, keeping with that historical fiction vibe that we've been going on, after I read The Children of Gods and Fighting Men, I read The Wolf Den by Elodie Harper, and then I also read the second book in the Wolf Den trilogy, the House with the Golden Door. So this is a historical fiction set in Pompeii, following a slave girl that works in a brothel. I rated book one a 4.5 out of five and book two a 4.25 out of five. I won't say anything about the plot in book two as it will give away spoilers. And I think this is something that a lot of people should read if you don't mind something that is incredibly bleak and dark. Because this is a book designed to let us look into at the lives of those who were less fortunate in that time. So we're looking at a slave's life back in Pompeii, you know, some rich aristocrat or general. So how often do we get that sort of perspective? And this was the most beautiful and compelling book I've possibly ever read. And that's a phrase I'm going to use for another book I read this month, but this was even more so. Seeing how hard life was for these girls in this situation, but seeing how they just are constantly trying to look for the light or make the best of this scenario. So seeing the girls between their working hours where they're just sitting around together just trying to make jokes and you know find little bits of fun in their situation seeing how the city would have holidays for the slaves so they get a day off where they can go out and see some music and just have some happiness it was a very enlightening read and it's something that will stick with me for a long time and I will highly recommend this series for everyone. I can't wait to finish off this trilogy this month and just was absolutely phenomenal. So keeping with that bleak and compelling tone, let's talk about The Road by Cormac McCarthy, a story about a father and a son in a post-apocalyptic world, traveling down a road, just trying to find something and some way to survive this. Again, super dark. There's nothing happy about this book just a dad just just trying to help his son just trying to stay alive it's very simple writing there's no chapters it's just a story of going from point a to point b super bleak setting and it just feels like a deep exploration of humanity i can't recommend this book enough and i'm going to be reading a lot of cormac mccarthy now i was blown away and i'm super happy i read the road i think i'll read blood meridian next but if you have another recommendation please let me know so coming back to something a bit more lighter, one of my other DNFs this month was He Who Fights With Monsters by Sherdalune. And there was nothing wrong with this book. So this is another like a lit RPG. So it's something along the lines of Dungeon Crawler Carl. We have an Australian guy who was transported to another world and has sort of video game-esque features to him that help him to survive in this other world. And he becomes a monster hunter and adventurer. And this was really fun, but it was a 28 hour audiobook. And the narrator just makes every character sound like the same person. So I feel like we're getting Jason's POV, the main Australian. And then we get a bunch of other characters from other worlds and they just all sound like Jason, our Australian dude, which kind of made the audiobook hard to follow, but also it dragged out too long. I feel like if you want to get me invested in your story, you need to get to the point a bit quicker, especially in book one. Then you can extend things out in later books, but I just couldn't get invested enough in the audiobook. Maybe if I physically read this, I think I would have had a better time if I just read a few chapters a night. It would have been something that I would have been able to read and fall asleep to because it was a bit of that lighter tone. And I'm a little bit disappointed because I really wanted to get into this one and there was nothing wrong with it. But there was just nothing pulling me into it. And with all these reads like The Road and all these historical fictions that were just so compelling, I just wasn't invested enough to spend the time reading it. So that's why I DNF'd it. And the other DNF I had this month is one that I will return to. And that was Memories of Ice, book three of Malazan, Book of the Fallen. This is one I've tried picking up three times now. And it just requires a lot of brain power. So I've read the first five chapters now. And they are all absolutely phenomenal. Like every time I'm reading Malazan, I'm like, holy shit, this is the best thing ever. But it just requires a bit too much brain power for me. I think I have to just only read Malazan when I'm on holidays. And I don't holiday very often. My last holiday was in March, and that's when I read the first two Malazan books. I read two Malazan books in like 
a week and then I haven't returned to it since because when I use my brain power, I'm at work. So I just want my reading to not have to feel like a job. I will return to Memories of Ice. The writing is phenomenal. It's like Ryan Lee Durfee and Jay Kristoff. The plotting is insane. There's a lot of characters, which is one of the hardest things for me to keep track of is just how many different characters there are. The world building is incredible. So everything about Malazan is great. It's just the brain power required for it is a bit too much when I'm not on holiday. So lastly, I've just got two more books to go through. So I read Oathbringer, the third book in Stormlight. I did this one on audio as I've lent out my physical copy to one of my clients, but I also didn't have the copy before that because my sister had it. I've been reading this series with quite a few people. My dad, my sister, and one of my clients at work is all reading this along. I think for me, Oathbringer, I enjoyed more on my first read because I read it in four days. The things that people complain about this book about it being a bit more of a slog and being a bit slower and it just being longer than it needs to be. Weren't an issue because I read it in four days, but now that I could sit with it, I still read this one in like five days on audiobook. I plow through these uh, Stormlight books. Brandon Sanderson is very easy to binge. His writing style is just so easy to digest. I think that's why he's so popular because you can just fully immerse yourself in a completely different world so easily because his writing style is just so easy to consume. And in Stormlight, I feel like his characters are the strongest, particularly Kaladin, Adeline, and Dalinar. I'm not the biggest Shalan fan, especially once she goes down the route she does in Oathbringer. I won't say where it is, but really good book. I love the Kaladin parts. I love Dalinar's backstory in Oathbringer, but there's a few things that just felt a bit drawn out, and I would have liked the book to be a little bit shorter. But actually, I don't think that's true. I don't think I want... Um, Sanderson to shorten these books. Stormlight is something very special. I feel like these books are a production and something special because of what Sanderson does. He makes them big, he puts his interludes in there, and I don't know how to just put it into I don't know how to put it into words, but every one of these books feels like a production. We get massive storylines and arcs that all thread and weave together. We get these beautiful interludes that fill out the world in between. And it's just something massive, epic, and grand. So although I'm going to complain that books three and four are a little bit too long, I wouldn't want them to be shorter because it wouldn't be Stormlight if it wasn't that big, epic, grand story that just has too many storylines and, and too many things built in. I mean, I wouldn't want it to feel rushed. I like that he takes his time, but you just got to be mindful of that when you read the books. And the last book I read this month, probably one of the best books I've read this year, and most likely the best book I read this month, though The Wolf Den by Elodie Harper was a very close second, is Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb, the second book in the Farseer trilogy. You guys know I absolutely loved book one, Assassin's Apprentice. It was super cozy and it just felt like coming home. And Royal Assassin felt the same way. I've only read two of Robin Hobb's books, but I can just immediately immerse myself in her world because I can just connect to Fitz, the main character. Robin just puts you in his head so well and you're just fully immersed in the story because you understand Fitz, who he is, what drives him and why he is the way he is. So you just feel so connected to the story. These books are so compelling. I can't put them down. They're big, massive chapters, but I just can't stop chewing through them because I'm so invested in Fitz's story. And I just need to know what happens. And if it wasn't for Libby having holds that just take way too long to come in, I would be binging through the entirety of the Realm of the Elderlings. I absolutely love it. I can't wait to dive into Assassin's Quest. I'm pretty sure the Farseer trilogy is going to be a top four all-time series for me. I'm pretty sure top one or two, but I just need to read Assassin's Quest to fully finalize the theory. But so far, these audiobooks are narrated perfectly. I feel fully immersed in this world whenever I'm listening to them. And Fitz is absolutely phenomenal. There's nothing bad I can say about these books. I absolutely love them and cannot wait to read more. And with that, I'll just tell you about one other book I started this month. So I've been reading Best Served Cold pretty much for the entirety of this month, just slowly here and there. I've been doing so much of my reading via audio that I just haven't had the time to fully pick up and dive into Best Served Cold. I'm not sure how much I'm going to have to read it in the coming month. So this is just going to be one I'm going to have in my videos for a while until I finish it up. But with that, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you've read any of these books, please tell me your thoughts on them. Tell me what you read in August and what you're going to be reading in September. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day.